Hello and welcome at Thomas Geiger Car. Today with the first test drive of the Lightyear Zero, a car that takes a totally different approach on the electric avenue. Ten years ago, five students from the Netherlands participated on a solar race in Australia and somehow got the taste of solar energy and cars. A few years later, they founded a company. Now there are 500 people and they're ready for production with the Lightyear Zero. If you want to know what to expect from that vehicle, join me on my first test drive and I'll tell you more about it. With the design of the vehicle, it's all about aero efficiency. That is the reason why the car looks pretty similar to a Porsche Taycan or the recently shown Mercedes EQXX. But to be honest, it's the other way around. Not Lightyear has copied from Mercedes. This car has been shown initially three years ago and it's the Mercedes engineers that somehow took some clues from Lightyear. And if you look at the details, you'll see lots of points where aero efficiency has been dramatically improved. We got fully closed wheels in the front. We got even closed wheel arches in the back. We have a very sleek and very slim roof line. The car is very low. And since the battery is also very thin, we have lots of aero work underneath the floor as well. And you already realized no door mirrors anymore, just the camera also saving wind energy. Before we start the test drive, let's take a moment to look around and check the interior. The car is not much higher than a Porsche 911, but I got enough headroom and especially enough legroom in both rows. And the trunk fits 640 liters. But if you look around, it is still a prototype with the emergency switch here and some 3D printed materials instead of the rattan wood. Nevertheless, it is not fancy, it is not luxurious, even if the price is on a Ferrari level. It's just to prove it's feasible, you can do it, it's not to be a millionaire's toy. But there are some fancy features in the vehicle, not to impress the owner, no, they're all for a reason. It's functionality and it's mainly to reduce the drag coefficient. The door mirrors, for example, have been replaced by camera systems as we know it from the Audi e-tron or the famous Volkswagen XL1. And even the rear view mirror is replaced by a camera, again for a reason. Since there is no rear window, because everything is covered with solar panels, you just need the camera to take a look at the back. For sure Lightyear is making a huge effort to show the driver how he harvests the sun. And you have a display where you can see how the energy is flowing. And if you're not into numbers, you can just judge by the picture. Because here you see the car, you see all the solar panels mounted. And the brighter the yellow color is, the more sun is in the battery. Finally driving the Lightyear 1 for the first time. Still a prototype vehicle a few weeks ahead of production. So fit and finish is not final. The materials are not final and there is a big emergency button on the dashboard as well but it drives and it drives pretty well it is powered with four in-wheel motors that's something unique as well while all the other companies are using motors on the axles Lightyear has chosen the in-wheel motors because it is all about efficiency they're not only gaining energy from the sun they're also saving energy and doing a lot to save that that is the reason why the car is very sleek. It's got a drag coefficient of 0.19. That's even better than the Mercedes EQS, which claims to be the world champion in aero efficiency. So it's all about bringing the efficiency up and the consumption down. That's why Lightyear choose the in-wheel motors. That's why the car is so sleek and that all leads to a very small battery compared to the size of the vehicle and the range 60 kilowatt hours still enough to obtain a range of 625 kilometers roughly and that's without harvesting the sun. In Central Europe, let's say Netherlands where the company comes from or Germany, you will get another 40-50 kilometers of range per day in average. In sunny Spain, where we are right now, it's 70 kilometers. And if you go further down south, if somebody in Africa could afford this car, or if you bring it to Africa, you might even get 100 kilometers 
of driving range just by harvesting the sun. Even if the car is very expensive and competes with vehicles like a Tesla Model S or even more a Lucid Air, it is a kind of frugal and not showing off. That is for the driving figures. It only accelerates from 0 to 100 in 10 seconds and only goes up to 160 kilometers per hour. And it is also for the interior. It is vegan, but there are no fancy materials, no big screens, no fuss. It's all about efficiency and proving the car is capable of doing it and driving it. Since the car is constructed and developed to be so efficient, it should coast and roll longer as every other car. It has a pretty stiff regenerative braking, but if you unlock that system, if you switch it off and if you just let it coast, it should roll and roll and roll further than any other vehicle, even if it's not that heavy, so there's not too much mass to give you enough speed while rolling. I'm driving at about 100 kilometers per hour now, taking off the foot from the pedal and just let the car coast and roll and see how far I can get. I'm still at about 95 kilometers per hour, so it's really slowing down very, very slowly. And I can imagine if traffic allows to coast at least another two or three minutes before the car really comes to a standstill. The Lightyear Zero is just the beginning of the story for the Lightyear company. It will be built in maximum 946 units. That's the first three digits of the light speed. That's why they limit it to that figure. And production will start towards the end of the year. The first customers will receive their vehicles within this year and it will be limited to Europe only. But the next plan is already up. The development of a mass volume vehicle has already started and in 2024-2025 Lightyear will surprise with a crossover type vehicle that will only cost 30,000 euros in Europe and that is planned for six digit numbers so 100,000 units or even more because their idea is that in the future every car should harvest the sun. Thanks for joining me on that first ride with the Lightyear Zero, a car that takes a totally new approach on the electric avenue because it really harvests the sun and will bring the cost of the electric vehicle significantly down. Yes, for the moment it is a very expensive toy for the rich ones, for the entrepreneurs and for the ultra green ones. But on the long hand, the more energy you harvest from the sun, the less energy you have to get from the plug. The smaller the battery, the cheaper the vehicle. That's what the reason why Lightyear is pretty convinced that in the near future, every electric vehicle will have solar panels on it.